one of the all-time highlights for me was talking to you on the set of Jack Ryan because you, you were just so insightful about everything, and you, it was just one of the best interviews I've ever been a part of. Thanks. And uh, I, I mean that as sincerely as I've ever Thank told you. anyone. Any, anyway, one of the things that you talked about there, I'm, I, I'm very excited about Draft Day, but one of the things you talked about and I'm, I'm waiting on is you getting behind the camera again. And uh, you mentioned at the time that you were developing things, and I wanted to know what's the status of you. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. I have three or four things that I could direct, you know, um, but. You know, I just produced the thing I made. I financed myself called Black and White. It's a really good movie. And uh, but yeah, I would like to play the second half of my career out directing. But um, you know, a lot of them are westerns. A lot of they You know, what happens is people get a little bit shy about what I would do. Kevin, we love you. We love you. But that movie, um, try this movie. So. You know, contrary to popular opinion, I don't get everything that I want. All my movies have been struggles. The dances, to fill the dreams, they're struggles. And uh, open range, I, I have to go out and do it myself. Black and white, I have to go out and do it myself. So the movies that, that I want to direct, somehow, don't they fall between the cracks of what it is they like. I think they're terribly commercial. I, I absolutely do. I don't. I, I wouldn't put my own money into something I didn't think was going to work. Uh, so, you know, studios don't put their own money into things. So, I, there's, you know, I don't think that artistic and, and making okay, money so are mutually exclusive. I think they really line up. You know, when a movie is liked, when it's loved, when it's talked about, when it's shared, that's that's a that's a category for becoming a classic. You make a classic. That that rolls money because it means it's a movie that passes generation to generation. So if you own that movie, that's nothing but waterfront real estate. Listen, sir, I'm well aware of what you're saying, and it makes sense to me. I'm surprised after the success of Hatfield McCoy's, which you talked about there, that you know more stuff in the genre isn't easier to do. Yeah, well, they're they're gonna make you know Texas Rangers. They asked me to do it. I'm just not gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna find my own thing. I've, I've got this Western that I think I could make. I actually have this idea to make them all at once and release one like on Memorial Day, one on Thanksgiving, and then one on the 4th of July, all within a 12-year span. 12, 12 months? Okay, 12 yeah. months span. Because um, it's all the same story, but it truly is a journey with the fourth movie coming right after that. Will I be able to do that? I don't know. But that's what I think about. That's what I try to do. And um, people go, oh, that's really interesting. It happened to me, actually. I don't think we can do that. <laughs> and I'm thinking, man, I thought that was a really good idea. I thought that was a true ongoing series or sequel, if you will, that actually was an honest one. It wasn't, a second one wasn't invented because the first one made a little money. Sure. This is just, it's the, it's the literary story. It's the complete thing. So. Well, I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit odd. Um, I don't. You know. I don't think I'm off on guard by any stretch. I think I'm pretty mainstream kind of entertainment. But it's just a little bit odd for studios. I think. Sure. Well, let me ask you this question because um, TV is now is good. No, no. Uh, TV is as good as it's ever been, and there's so many networks looking for viable content, content that uh, you know is, is good and commercial. Do you think that some of these ideas you have could be constructed and, you know. Yeah, well one of them really is, is a thing called Explorers Guild. I've been working on it for about five years. Simon and Schuster just picked it up. It's, it'll, be a five, it'll be five volumes. The first volume is uh, it's a novel. It's about, five, about 600 pages. It's beautiful. It's an old world thing. It, 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 the, the writer is, in my opinion, equivalent to Rudyard Kipling or Jules Verne. And that guy, we have him right now, and I'm, he's just finished the first book, and I hopefully we'll do four more. And I would like to bring, bring like the whole book, um, you know, to television, the whole book, you know, um, whether it's animation or not. So, you know, people again go, gee, I don't know. I don't know, you know, uh, let's wait and see. You know, I, I can't help how they think, and I can't help how I think. Yeah, I know you have, you have to go. I just have to say one last thing. I absolutely loved so much Man of Steel. Just loved it. And I wanted to know what the experience was like making that, and how a lot of people come up to you and said that men, you know, that role. And Yeah. It was difficult for me a little bit because I'm a rehearsal guy, and those movies are big engines. They just go. 
And so, uh, but I respected Zach so much and he was uh, very uh, inclusive with me in the sense that he really wanted me to be in his movie. And that's a nice thing, you know, to be wanted by somebody. And he, he's a true artist. And uh, but it was a little difficult because I'm the kind of guy that wants to rehearse, but things go really fast and, and we did it that way. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it.